Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today we've got the pleasure of watching Eskimac and their friend Dr. Pepper playing in a KV2 Derp Squad. Oh, ladies and gents, it's been a while since we've had a KV2 Derp Squad on this channel. Usually, when I play or I, I commentate on epic replays from you, the lovely World of Tanks community, a single KV2 is enough. This is going to be double the derp, double the action, double the death, I guess, for the enemy team. And yeah, the KV-2, it really takes no prisoners. Now sure, that was immediately a very lucky shot for Eskimac in the tier 6 Soviet heavy tank. But I think for all the people out there who really dislike the French wheeled vehicles inside World of Tanks as to how they've changed the meta, uh, this one's for you boys and girls, all of you out there who like the good old days of KV-2 and you, you love the high explosive rounds on this vehicle. Definitely good in the right situation, but would anyone claim that the KV-2 is a completely outrageous overpowered tank? I don't really think so. Not unless you're getting hit by one and one-shotted, right? So, what a start for the KV-2 to just pretty much pluck out one of the eyes of the opponents there in the form of the French light tanks. It's so important to try and get rid of light tanks at the start of the battle if you're playing your heavy vehicles. And look, Dr. Pepper! Looks like Dr. Pepper just one-shot the 5916 as well. So that's one for each of the KV-2s inside this, this derp squad. Alright, so the KV-2, it, it's one of the oldest tanks in the game. Would you believe that this vehicle was actually tier 5? Originally in World of Tanks, uh, the tech tree was 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 very uh, easy, or so I say, it was uncomplicated like it was now. It was streamlined. That's the word that I'm looking for. There was only one KV. There was no KV one. There was no KV two. They were both the same tank, and they were both at tier five effectively. You could either use the KV one or the KV two turret on the KV at tier five. And you could choose two different guns to put on it. You could use the 107mm, that's the gun that's on the KV-5 for example with 300 alpha damage. Or alternatively, you could use this 152mm derp gun. Now Dr. Pepper seems to be very good at blind firing tanks as that P-43 tur looks like the shell was already on the way towards the target before it got lit up unless I'm mistaken. And oh, looks like it's a double team here. Dr. Pepper in with the right hook and an Eskimo, uh, Eskimac finishing off with the left uppercut. What a great combination here to have inside a platoon. I have to admit, when I used to play with my, my good buddies Paul aka Jingles and Ike, and we used to take our KV-2s out on the battlefield. Quite often, things, the special things would happen inside them. And so I know, like, this is why I'm just... Look how, look at the KV-2's view range. Couldn't even see the Progetto right up until pretty much the, the whites of the eyes there. And that's because the view range on this vehicle is absolutely horrific. It's 330 base. For a tier 6 heavy, this thing isn't spotting very much. And this is why I'm so sad about Wargaming making these high explosive changes on the sandbox test server. Since my original video, they have kind of improved it. Uh, effectively, they've doubled the damage the high explosive rounds were doing from the first iteration. It still just feels to me as in, why would you fix what isn't broken? I don't think anyone really sits there thinking, oh, the KV-2 is broken uh, constantly. But the vehicle has enough downsides. It's not very mobile. It has a huge turret. It's not the most accurate of tanks. Although uh, Dr. Pepper and Eskimac are showing that the 0.6 accuracy on this tank... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes RNG will be on your side, right? But still, all of this damage, we're at a thousand damage here. Maybe some blind damage that was dealt as well. It, it, it's not kind of the end of the world, but it does look very impressive. And I think that's what's really awesome about K the KV-2, is the way that it makes you feel. It's not that the tank is doing outrageous damage, at least all of the time. Uh, I've seen other tier 6 heavy tanks have much bigger games than I've seen the KV-2. I think it's just... The, the hilarity of firing that big high explosive round and just that big release that you get from from playing it inside World of Tanks. It's definitely still one of my go-to tanks when I'm feeling a little bit pent up and tier 10 is just aggravating me. Maybe I'm getting shot by artillery, maybe I'm getting bad matchmaking. Yeah, the KV-2 doesn't really care, does it? This big old high explosive round it doesn't matter that this is a plus two game in a standard tank, although there are a pre there is a premium version of the KV-2 now in the game um, since, of course, I last featured the standard KV-2 on this channel. I think the KV-2 is just this absolute wonderful, fantastic vehicle inside World of Tanks. It's a real classic. 
And Wargaming definitely profited off that when they had their collaboration with Games Workshop to make the, the KV-2 Warhammer tank, or whatever you want to be calling it. And I really would suggest to Wargaming that if it isn't broke, don't fix it. But the high explosive rounds were only truly broken on maybe two different things. One, the Type 5 Heavy. You fixed the Type 5 Heavy, you did a really good job. Now, if you want to use the high explosive rounds on the Type 5 Heavy, you're not the most competitive, but you still have a very competitive armor-piercing gun on the tank that you can use that still makes the Type 5 Heavy a competitive vehicle at Tier 10. Probably not the best Tier 10 tank, um, but, but definitely by no means the worst. And so, please, Wargaming, consider that there are many great things about the Sandbox test server. For example, the health points. I think the health point increase at low tier is great. I really enjoy it. I also like the way that you're trying to reward people for not firing premium rounds by effectively increasing the alpha damage on all of the standard rounds. Great stuff. But high explosive rounds, please reconsider. I feel like it's an unnecessary change to the game. High explosive rounds have a very clear defined role right now inside the game for as you as you mentioned on the sandbox tub of finishing off low health tanks or just managing to take advantage of tanks that forego all of their armor to be able to gain increased combat capacity or increased mobility what is wrong with high explosive rounds I, I personally don't see a problem with them and i would think that more players out of 10 in world of tanks significantly more wouldn't really have an issue with them at all uh, the progetto on the other hand on the enemy team might have a bit of an issue with getting three well 300 is not even that much i mean 315 we can all laugh it's probably because of the, the fancy explosions on the screen if the KV-2 had been using the 107mm that you can still use on side this tank or in a vehicle like the, uh, the T-150, for example, that has 300 alpha damage and way, way, way higher penetration than the high explosive rounds on the KV-2. Yeah, but then again, I guess uh, when you penetrate with that gun, you don't do 900 damage, which is the ultimate god roll for the KV-2. Ah, oh, the absolute dream for the KV-2 right now would be... If it sneaks up behind a Carnarvon Action 10 and it delivers a 900 death punch right up the rear of the British heavy tank. Oh, this is looking juicy. This is literally the dream. Engaging a tank two tiers higher than you with a high explosive round and they've got just the right amount of hit points. Oh, 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 th this should be illegal to show on YouTube. Oh, no, 996 damage and a fire as well for good measure making the total damage dealt over a thousand to the back of that tank. But it's completely situational, right? Why did the Carnarvon Action 10 not consider that there would be KV-2 sneaking up behind them? If they got his armor towards the KV-2, they never would have been able to penetrate. Maybe they would have done 300 damage, but then had a 20 second reload after that, where the Carnarvon Action 10 could have pretty much picked apart all of the hit points of the KV-2. I just why do we need to have everything just dumbed down inside the game why do we have to have everything standardized streamlined why does it have to happen I don't think it does I think it was a mistake with artillery and I really hope that wargaming don't do it with high explosive rounds come on boys and girls we've got to save the kv2 somehow right I'm talking about saving the KV-2. It looks like Eskimac in their KV-2 is definitely saving the game here. But there's a, a platoon. No, not a platoon. There's a, a couple of Tigers sitting in front. And they're very healthy vehicles indeed. This is going to be an incredibly tricky situation. Even though Eskimac and their friend Dr. Pepper are now up to 9 kills in a plus 2 matchmaking game. This is an incredible impact for a platoon. Will Eskimac hit here? No, another miss. And Eskimac is very lucky that he has enough time to be able to reload. Because if the Tigers just reversed into the into the cap circle right now, they'd probably be able to cap it out. Luckily, it looks like the, the tier 8 Soviet heavy tank, the IS-3, um, is managing to help out and puts a round into the Tiger at long range, also interrupting the cap circle. Talking about KV-2s, what's better than two KV-2s? Three KV-2s? Well, let's see how long this one lasts on the enemy team that is racing forward to see if they can finish off the IS-3. Maybe even to put around into Dr. Pepper. Or alternatively... Oh, no! Well, the IS-3 shuts down the KV-2 on the enemy team. Now there are only two KV-2s remaining. But with all of these hit points on the Tiger, Eskimac needs to be very careful here. Whoa, 307 damage to the tracks of the Tier 7 German heavy tank. The German heavy tank not returning fire, even though the Tiger does have an incredible, I believe, a nine round a minute rate of fire and should have been able to put in at least one or two rounds in towards Eskimax tank there. Locking down the track 
of the tier six Soviet heavy tank. Eskimak repairs it and lunges forwards, putting a round right through the front of the Tiger. Big splash damage there for 389. And just frankly, terrible play by the Tiger on the enemy team. Completely overwhelmed by the pressure of the KV-2 to secure Eskimak's eighth kill. But the Tiger snipes the IS-3 with superior view range. And so now the game is starting to look a little bit dodgy. And again, the Tiger finishes off Dr. Pepper on Eskimax team, but a solid round there through the side of the, the Tiger manages to do 405 damage, not penetrating of course, but splashing over the hull armor, removing about 25% of the Tiger's total hit points. Eskimak spams his F7 key to ask for help, but it looks like the T21 has such a bad radio, along with the KV-2 that he's so far away that he's out of communication range. The Tiger bounces off the KV-2's armor, Eskimak does 310 to the front of the Tiger, and this is neck and neck stuff right now. If Eskimak doesn't manage to finish off the Tiger with the next shot, then this German beast roaring down upon him is probably going to be able to finish him off with the next three shots. Oh, it's a wall in between high explosive rounds. Can't penetrate the wall, but his tank can. Ramming down the wall and destroying the final remaining tank, securing nine kills, and that is 11 between the platoon. What an incredible carry by these two players here. Congratulations to you, Eskimak and Dr. Pepper, for having such a tremendous impact in plus two matchmaking. It's it's really fun for me to see games like this. This wasn't because premium rounds were spammed. This wasn't because the, the players were playing premium tanks. This wasn't because they were in a, a plus two matchup and they were destroying tier four vehicles on the enemy team. This was nitty gritty play-by-play -play stuff that allowed uh, the underdogs to come out on top. And that's one of my favorite things to see in World of Tanks. So Eskimak nails a Randley Walters medal here for the nine kills in plus two matchmaking. Incredible stuff. A defender medal for protecting the cap circle against the Tiger's onslaught. And a high caliber medal for the 5,178 damage that they dealt in this game. And look at this base experience points, boys and girls. 2,000. 220. That is an outrageous game. That would be an ace if that was the result with a premium account, but it simply wasn't. That was 2,220 base, 3,380 with a premium account and a platoon playing bonus. One of the biggest games I've ever seen in a KV2. And yeah, when you finish off nearly two thirds of the enemy team in a, in a plus two game, you know you're in for something truly special. So, Eskimac and Dr. Pepper, congratulations to you on a tremendous carry. And thank you for reminding me about why I love KV2 replays. And why I also like blowing off some steam and playing one in a platoon with some of my friends. Don't think anyone's going to claim that these are the most overpowered tanks in World of Tanks. And I just truly hope that Wargaming abandoned their plans to, to revisit the, the mechanics of high explosive rounds. And as I said multiple times through the video, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if they do make those changes, then the magical moments like this one in the KV-2, oh, their the time is definitely numbered. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what you think about the KV-2 and also about the high explosive changes on the latest iteration of the Sandbox test server. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.